Our guest today is the author Neil Sanders. Mind control is a documented fact. The control of the actions and emotions of an unsuspected victim has been a reality at least since the 1950s. Drawing on declassified documents, interviews with the doctors involved, scientific papers and mainstream media reports, your thoughts are not your own, shows the origins, objectives and architects of mind control. Neil Sanders holds an MA in Film Studies, studied psychology and media production for his BA Honours and is a qualified hypnotherapist. Neil is considered an expert on the subject of mind control and has been studying the history of this dark art and its application by military and government intelligence agencies across the globe for many years. Neil has appeared on several television shows and has made numerous radio appearances in Europe and the USA and is the author of Your Thoughts Are Not Your Own, Volumes 1 and 2. Welcome to Unite Planet. Uh, today we're happy to be welcomed to the home of Neil Sanders. Thank you for allowing us to uh, come into your home today mm -hmm. no, and invade you. you. Yes. <laughs> um, so we're talking uh, about mind control men today, and that's a broad subject I know. Okay. Um, uh, can we uh, start just to, yeah, just a background of uh, overview of, of mind control and yeah. what, what it is, you know, people might not. Well, it's, it's basically any sort of like uh, attempt to uh, manipulate somebody's opinions or somebody's mm. feelings or somebody's actions. Um, broadly, there's, there's like four types. There's um, truth serums, uh, you know, for interrogation purposes, yeah. espionage, spies caught behind enemy lines, that type of thing. Even, you know, certain police tactics, like, um, you know, these, these ways that you can manipulate a confession out of somebody, even if they haven't actually yeah. done, done anything. Um, <laughs> And so the counterpoint to that would be um, resistance to that, resistance to, say, hypnosis, mm -hmm. resistance to sort of having um, information taken from your brain and, and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. The third type would be the sort of what we call sort of Manchurian candidates and, yeah. uh, and that type of thing. We, we, we're talking about controlling uh, the physicality of somebody or putting thoughts in their head, putting voices mm -hmm. in their head or... or um, trying to manipulate them like in a more direct sense yeah, yeah. And, and then the fourth kind would be excuse me it's incredibly broad which is basically like propaganda mm. advertising mm -hmm. public relations which is basically all sort of a sliding scale of yeah. the same thing like convincing somebody to buy a pair of shoes is, is, mm. is not dissimilar in tactics to convincing somebody that there, that there's a despot on the other side of the world that we need to go and bomb mm -hmm. it's, it's about you know capturing hearts and minds and getting opinions and usually it, it works on a sort of an emotional level rather than a logical one because basically people are, are easy to mani manipulate with, yeah, with emotions. Yeah. You get people, time. Well, you get, you get somebody angry, okay? Mm. Uh, and, you know, how many how many times have you seen somebody like get into a fight or something and there's no real reason, they're just riled up mm. and but may, later they'll say like, oh, you know, I really shouldn't have done that or whatever. Mm, yeah. But this is the point, emotions are, are, are powerful things and if you can, you can sort of manipulate people, the one thing that they're doing that's, that's so incredibly prevalent at the minute is convincing everybody that they're a victim mm -hmm. or that they're going to yeah. be a victim of somebody else mm -hmm. that's going to encroach on, onto them. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, loads of tactics that have been, been used uh, uh, for that. Um, and, you know, nine times out of ten is nonsense, isn't mm -hmm. it, really, to be quite honest. So, so that that's really essentially uh, what, what mind control is. And as, as you say, it is, it is a very, very broad... Uh, uh, sort of spectrum and uh, and there's, there's all sorts of things that it can be applied in you know political sort of debate or, or elections or anything like that advertising yeah, yeah. Um, corporate 
PR. That's, I mean, PR, public relations, is um, it's a marketed phrase for propaganda because mm. essentially when, when Edward Bernays and uh, Ivy Lee and people started sort of using sort of um, newspapers and, and that type of thing to promote products surreptitiously and then yeah. to start sort of selling them via, you know, advertising mm -hmm. sort of, um, it was originally called propaganda mm -hmm. uh, and basically because the, the, because of the negative connotations yeah. because of those pesky nazis and commies um <laughs> they they had to change it and so they had to market a phrase for peacetime propaganda which was public relations which is ludicrous yeah. really isn't it mm -hmm. but, but but yeah so so that that's that's what mind control is you know just convincing somebody to do something uh, that, that they wouldn't normally do because because of an outside entity. Mm -hmm. I mean, it depends yeah. again how broad you want, you want to sort of take it. You could make the argument that that aspects of religion and mind control, that aspects of education yeah. and mind control, mm -hmm. that aspects of uh, uh, just aspects of the hierarchical class system is, is a mind control mm -hmm. system. Uh, you know, know your place in society, etc., etc., etc. Like institutions, like the fact that you have to curse the queen or can't talk to her, anything like that, that gives you sort of a position of like the way that things should be. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could tie it back to certain concepts, like the um, Edward Bernays and Walter Lippmann. Mm -hmm. Basically, they they were talking about either the engineering or the manufacturing of consent, which is exactly that. Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah. saying like. Why? Why is the queen given forty million pounds a year or whatever? Well, because she's the queen and mm -hmm. because she's good for tourism, yeah. which is nonsense. Like mm -hmm. Manchester United do more for British tourism than, <laughs> than the world. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, they yeah, do. Yeah. Like um, on financially, mm -hmm. and, and and it's sort of nonsense as well. It's like yeah, no, I forgot because you know France has not had any tourists since they got rid of the aristocracy. Like you know, the, the, mm. the, 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 it, it's yeah. ludicrous. Yeah. Like yeah. nobody yeah. goes to the People's Palace now. Ceausescu is not there, is it? <laughs> It's just mm -hmm. pointless. Like, so, yeah. so that's just a moot point. It's just yeah. a, a ludicrous argument. But the point is that it's, it's sort of engineered into into people's consciousness to the, mm -hmm. to the fact where even to sort of question um, for some people, even to question so the authority of a, of a policeman or the authority of a, of a government spokesperson or the or, or anything, mm -hmm. the doctor, whatever, um, it is it, just like beyond the pale for, for some people they just won't do it because mm. because it's been it's been drilled into them yeah. in the same way that you don't talk back to your parents or yeah, yeah. whatever do yeah. you know what i mean like uh, I mean, yeah. is it always the, the concept of authoritarianism yeah, yeah. To, yeah to an extent it's third party advocacy yeah, like, okay yeah. and it works in two ways right okay one you assume that because somebody is basically paid more than you is older than you is in a position of authority mm -hmm. that they know what they're talking about yeah. because otherwise society is mental isn't it mm -hmm. like, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and uh, and then the other part is that essentially it's um it just allows for you to remove um any um responsibility from your own actions because basically you've taken the, the, somebody else's perspective on board and you basically follow their instructions rather than uh rather than making the decision for yourself basically mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, on that um subject that the the so the orig origins of mind control. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. It come from Nazis. The, the Operation Paperclip. Yeah, I mean, there there was certainly was. I mean, Mengele was looking at what was called trauma bonding. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think it was at um, Dachau. Although I could be wrong. Uh, they were looking at experiments to uh, alter, you know, again this sort mm. of like truth serum yeah, sort yeah. of manipulation of people mm. within uh, the confines of a. Um, uh, a uh, you know an interrogation scenario or an interview, it, it's a bit of a strange one really because like there's certain so there's some people that would say oh look at this paragraph in the Egyptian Book of the Dead because it's talking about like um, creation of uh, slaves with certain potions yeah. and mm -hmm. incantations or whatever which it looks like it might be sort of like an early type of sort of hypnotic suggestion or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's obviously, I, I don't know when this sort of like the voodoo tradition started, you know, the sort of Haitian concept yeah, of something yeah. like zombies and mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. like that. That is essentially, you know, a type of, of mind control. So it's a bit of a debate as to where it sort of started. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously the sort of where, where it started to get sort of mechanised in, in, a, in a big way was, um, was, was Second World War. But it looks like there was actually something in it. Like, I mean, the British were using um, uh, 
my control techniques um, against people like Ellie Hagar. Alexander Kennedy was experimenting on people like Ellie Hagar, and this was in like 1943, and it was like drugs, oh, yeah. drugs and interrogation and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So everybody had their hands in it. So this concept that basically like the Nazis were doing it, and then afterwards we, we brought them back to America mm -hmm. and started to look at it then, sort of like, because mm -hmm. MKUltra started, um, sort of early fifties, mm -hmm. um, sort of chatter started like forty seven and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that was sort of naval intelligence, and that's um, the the idea is that it might have been a continuation from from sort of Nazi experiments, and I don't doubt that they uh, they got um, some of the the useful sort of information that, that was taken from from them, but they were all at it. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm trying to remember when the sort of um, the show trials against people like Mendetsky and stuff like that, the, the Soviet show trials, I can't remember whether that was before or after. Um, uh, I, I can't remember, for life, I can't remember that, well, what that was. But, you know, but the point being that <coughs> there were various types of people trying to be, that's really how civilization yeah. works to an extent. Depending on how sort of extreme you want to take it, you have to have people having a sort of tacit approval that this is the way that the world works. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, um, you know, it goes to chaos, and if you if you sort of in particularly extreme um, regimes like that, obviously the tactics become more extreme. Yeah. Um, and so obviously in in, in communist uh, regimes, you've got that sort of what it's causing is like a forced socialization. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you see. I've recently watched the Death of Stalin, which is just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Oh, I mean, it's yeah. fancy. It's a Dalmanti Mandi Iannucci film. It's really really good. Right. Very dark humor, mm -hmm. but like. The just the um, the fear of putting saying the wrong thing, mentioning yeah, the wrong yeah. person, or something because you'd be, just, you'd be done, you'd be yeah, memorized yeah. like that completely. And this is like it's not dissimilar. And this this innumerate regimes where this is exactly exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Like you know, it was exactly the same in uh, Bank, you know, in in Iraq. Oh, yeah. Like you spill a uh, spill coffee on the picture of the, the uh, leader. You're dead. You're executed. Yeah. Uh, well, this is the point. Like it's yeah. a very, very complex thing. And of course, the invasion of Iraq was like you know it was it, it was uh, um, on false pretenses and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and um, it was just it was, it was wrong. It was mm -hmm. executed yeah. the wrong way, and everything yeah. about it was wrong. But that's the sort of what they do. They create these people, mm -hmm. and they create these monsters. So you've got that tacit approval by a certain element of the population afterwards. Mm -hmm. Because it's difficult to argue that. That that uh, Hussein wasn't a monster, mm. okay, um, but he's a, he was a creation of us. Like, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like basically, um, it, well, it's, it's like giving somebody a job as a manager and then shutting down the entire company because mm. basically that manager is a monster. Mm. You knew what he was like yeah, and he hired yeah. him. In fact, you encouraged him to act mm. in that particular way mm -hmm. and have that that sort of you know working style, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's, it's nonsense and propaganda. And, it's, and nine times out of ten, this is the thing that people don't talk about ever in wartime scenarios, is that um, it's economic. Mm -hmm. It's economic yeah, and it's strategic. Yeah. Like, one of the real reasons for the start of the First World War was the Orient Express. Mm -hmm. Because basically, all, now all of a sudden, Germany's got a direct line to the oil fields of the Middle East. So where did we? Where was the first place that England mm -hmm. sent troops? Baghdad. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Because we wanted to secure the oil fields and yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, that's that's what's going on. It's it's, it's economic mm -hmm. battles yeah. that are going on. I'm very convinced that that's what's going on with this Russia, Syria, EU, America crap yeah. at the minute. Basically, in the Ukraine. Uh, these pipelines that go through mm -hmm. it, and Gazprom supplies several countries in Europe. Mm -hmm. The rest is supplied by various other entities. Like there are US interests that are trying to get involved. There are UK interests that are trying to get involved. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same in Syria. There's Genie Oil, which is run by Rupert Murdoch. There's an American firm, and there's a Russian firm. I think it's Gazprom again. Mm -hmm. And essentially, that's what's trying to happen. And it, it's very complicated. Like Paul Manafort was essentially trying to sort of make sort of lobby for pro-Russian uh, interests in the Ukraine right. so that the, 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 uh, the pipeline could essentially go mm. through. Okay. okay, now, people say, well, so was that treasonous against America? Not necessarily, because basically, again, what you've got at the minute is you've got the EU as a viable, I'm not a fan of the EU, mm. but from an economic perspective, mm. you've got far more money 
uh, to, to be a rival against Russia or America mm -hmm. than you have as uh, state uh, as individual states. Mm -hmm. So disregarding any of the nonsense politics and nationalisation and stuff like that, from an economic sense, it is very very useful for Russia and America to break up the EU mm -hmm. and to promote mm -hmm. nationalism throughout various countries. Mm -hmm. um, not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing for the individual countries. I'm just mm -hmm. saying that there are other mm -hmm. players yeah, uh, yeah. playing. So yeah. you, do you know what I mean? And this, yeah, is, this yeah. is but again, that that is exactly the point of mind control. You think you're doing this for this particular reason, you're getting this benefit out of it, and then you don't realise that actually mm -hmm. this person is manipulating you in a particular yes, way yeah. in, mm -hmm. in order to, to benefit them them ultimately. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. False perception. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 Um, so, um, going back again to, um, to the project political thing and the CIA and the project Monarch, I think was, was Mo Monarch's a bit of a weird one. Monarch's yeah. one of these where basically um, the sort of, uh, I can't for life me ever remember which uh, CIA director it was that he kind of tacitly admitted it but in, mm. a, in a press conference by yeah, saying, yeah. someone asked him about it and he, and he got really angry with them and said, we shut that down in the 70s. Mm. Uh, and, um, uh, so obviously that's not, uh, it, it's not a, a, like a, a full admission, yeah, yeah. but it implies that such a thing did exist at one point. Yeah. Uh, and so that was a bit of a mis misstep by him. So, but Monarch is a bit more mysterious. There's obviously a few people that have come yeah, forward yeah, and yeah. claim to be Monarch slaves. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> don't know. Some, some of it's quite yeah. interesting, some of it mm. sounds like... Both they couldn't, they mm. could have made that story yeah, up. That's true. Uh, so, so it's very, very difficult uh, uh, to know. But mm -hmm. but yeah, they um, but MK Ultra basically um, it, it started uh, in the the fifties mm. um, and um, yeah, it just expanded. There's about one hundred and fifty like sub projects that we know of. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, what was it? There, there was the there was the technical service division. I can't I can never remember this guy's name as well. Who was it? It was. Uh, um, that was put in charge of it. No, Sydney got the that was it, the technical service division. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um it, the, the TSD were called uh, in the CIA were called the Department of Potions and Dirty Tricks. <laughs> so um uh, yeah and the, they were looking at all sorts of things. Like a lot of it was trying to do sort of like assassinations mm. of political leaders and stuff like that. They spent a huge amount of money looking at L S D and yeah. using that as like either a sort of a controlling agent mm. and Pretty soon they realised that that it's not useful in that way at all. Mm -hmm. It's useful as a sort of a um, as a disruptor or um, something to make people uh, discombobulated. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you spike them without them knowledge, yeah. basically. Yeah. And yeah. oh, I can't remember what it was John Law Holland. That was the guy. Like for a time, uh, the CIA got this magician employed for them, uh, and he was like the the um, at the time was the best sleight of hand magician. In the world, mm. and I'm sure his name was John Mulholland, and um, they essentially hired him to teach um, CIA agents how to surreptitiously put, you know, a dose in your, your drink. Okay. And and uh, you've got people like George Hunter Whitewood that would do that for fun. They'd go down to, uh, I think again, I think it was in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and he'd go on the sort of the boardwalk or whatever, um, where you know you've got restaurants on either mm -hmm. side, and what he'd do is he'd, he'd walk along this side and dose someone, dose someone, dose someone, walk along the other side, sit down, uh, order himself a meal or whatever, and just watch the carnage. <laughs> and, um, yeah, wow. this, well, this guy was a nutcase. This, yeah. this, uh, he, he was involved in, in a... Um, they basically set up a brothel with, with like, uh, that was wired for sound. Uh, and this was called uh, uh, Operation Midnight Climax. Mm. Um, and, yeah, they just basically um, got these prostitutes to dose people up with acid and then just filmed them and see what happened. I think one guy was was kept there for like nearly two months, just like continuously, just like dosing. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was it was nuts. It yeah. Was, um, I think it was I think it was uh, as long as that. Uh, again, yeah. I might be wrong, but uh, but yeah, it was it's ridiculous what they were doing. But like yeah, they they, they particularly after the war, um, there were lots and lots of experiments that were happening, and a lot of them were happening in um, medical facilities mm. because. Yeah. These are the people that, that are in the know about how to, you know, manipulate mm -hmm. brain power waves and um, behaviour and stuff like that. And a lot of the, the sort of the, the earlier um, manipulation, like it, it's really sort of like um, William Sargent and um, 
um, uh, Lord Cameron. And what it, what it is essentially using sort of electro, electric shock treatment, ECT, yeah, yeah. and um, barbiturate and use comas and that type of thing. And what they found was that um, after a certain amount of time, it just completely wipes the memory. Mm -hmm. it like, like just, it's not sort of like an amnesia thing where it's somewhere else and you can't recall it. It's just done, just gone, just completely gone. Mm -hmm. uh, and it could reduce people to like, well, the, the famous girl is Linda McDonald. And she went in there with a very, very sort of um, um, to this um, institute in Canada um, and very, very sort of mild postpartum depression or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, basically she can't remember her children now. Like they, she, they, had to, they had to teach her to speak and walk and use the toilet and everything again. And she, she can, like she, she knows if you show her the photo, she's learned now, she's a, she's a fully functioning adult. But it's like her life started again at age like 27 or something like that. And um, yeah, so she has no recall of her husband, no recall, no connection with her family at all. Um, she used to be able to play the guitar, she can't do that anymore and stuff like that. It's just, it, it's nuts. But she wasn't the only one. And, and again, like the, the, the things that we found out about, are the things that you found out about, God knows what they were doing to like prisoners and stuff like that. But again, like it, it's across, um, it's across all different countries, like Russians were doing things to prisoners, Koreans were doing things to prisoners, Chinese were certainly doing things to prisoners. Um, the English were doing things to, um, they were using mind control techniques and sort of like um, trying to get, if you isolate people and overstimulate them, right, okay, which is sort of main pretense in CIA's Q bar, I think, right, um, it, it, reduces into like a vegetative state mm -hmm. they, they mm -hmm. you know you can't cope with it you yeah. know, your brain just snaps um and they're doing this sort of thing they're doing this thing against people in the maids and um uh, uh you know suspects ira um suspect and terrorist and, and uh mm -hmm. and the like um and yeah they were they weren't shy about telling people they were doing this as well like it, it was essentially sort of a torture but that's what you see when you're at guantanamo well, well when you're at guantanamo with that famous photo of them all trying to pray and they've all got oven gloves on yeah. and goggles and they're all yeah, looking yeah, at everywhere because yeah. they don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing, they're, they're isolating them. Mm -hmm. If you put someone in an isolation tank or basically make it so that they can't feel the outside, mm -hmm. it takes a surprisingly short amount of time uh, for your brain to basically go into to, um, sort of response to psychosis, so you get all the extreme visual hallucinations. Uh, you'll have a disassociation uh, and uh, you basically won't, won't be able to relate properly to, to, to the real world. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an incredibly potent and destructive form of torture and, and that's what they're doing there. Mm -hmm. um, what I point, have pointed out a few times is, is basically isolation and overstimulation is exactly the conditions that happen on social media. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. which mm -hmm. is, um, you know, when you look, you set up by Peter Tan and Sean Parker, who are uh, an incutel, which is CIA. Right. And, you, you know, you just look at the sort of the financing behind certain groups and, and what they're into now, like things like Palantir, um, which is a sort of global, uh, it's, it's, it's a sort of military con subcontractor that basically it's, it's, it's data channeling and like um, um, collecting information, predictions and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, they, they, yeah. Now they, this is the, the real, the, the new thing. It's mm -hmm. not huge, it's not like brand new, but like this is the new thing, is the manipulation of your data yeah. and the manipulation of oh, yeah. uh, the monitoring of your data and how that is used to uh, trick and manipulate you mm -hmm. into, in certain ways. And you know, obviously the, the thing I've been talking about recently is Cambridge Analytica, which is just absolutely nuts. Um, it, it's, um, Cambridge Analytica is that firm that basically is, is connected to a group called SCL. SCL is a sign-ops operation. Okay? Mm -hmm. it's, it's got contracts with NATO, Department of Defense, Pentagon, US Marines. Um, it, its board is littered with uh, the elites, people that are connected to the Tory party, uh, people who are connected to the Queen, um, and uh, ex-British military, uh, ex-British military psychological warfare operations and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got list X um, classification, which means that it is able to um, secret and above um, documents pertaining to 
British military and British intelligence and British defence, it can access them, it can store them on its side. Okay. Cambridge Analytica and SCL designated as a weapon of the British government. Right. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. It it's seriously like yeah. it it, yeah. it cannot it's got an export control on it, which means that it cannot be applied um without the knowledge of the British government. Mm -hmm. uh, and its donors are connected to British military and British establishment. Also, Robert Mercer and Rebecca mm -hmm. Mercer, these right wing billionaires mm -hmm. that were mm -hmm. the people that put in the finance behind Donald Trump. Cambridge Analytica, what they did was they basically stole all your data, over 87 million uh, IP accounts through Facebook. It's not just Facebook, it's Snapchat, it's the private email and everything. Alexander Nix said uh, before this was exposed as being desperately illegal, he was boasting about the prowess of this in America and the way that they were able to manipulate people to vote for Trump. Um, and what they did was this, he said that we have between four and 5,000 data points on every single individual. Mm -hmm. That's uh, at the time that was over 137 million people in America. They had 5,000 data points on each one. And we're able to use these data points to psychologically analyze you and to micro target you. So in a very, very simple way, what they do is they look at these 5,000 data points about you, see what made you tick, see mm -hmm. what you liked, yeah. uh, and apply AI algorithms to it. What would be the most potent advertising technique specifically for you to convince you uh, to uh, vote in a particular way? Mm -hmm. And then what they'd do is they'd set up 20 or 30 sub puppet accounts who would make friends with you and would seem to be real humans. They've got AI predictability things now where they can basically react in real time like human beings and have quirks in their language like human beings so that they don't look like. And they learn, they learn to interact with your speech mm -hmm. patterns as well, so mm -hmm. it's like a real person. So there's 20, 30 people like this, and all of a sudden they'll start bombarding you with this specific mm -hmm. meme, or this specific story, or this specific advertising that manipulates mm -hmm. you in a particular way. And that is exactly what they did um, uh, for the Leave EU campaign, mm -hmm. uh, the pro, pro um, uh, leaving of the EU, um, and um, the Donald Trump campaign. Mm -hmm. Uh, which means that basically uh, you might have had a very, very good reason to vote uh, leave the EU uh, and you might have had a very, very good reason to vote for Donald Trump. But this company that is directly connected to, to certain aspects of the British military, British government, is a weapon of the British government and is financed by uh, by the elites with yeah. connections to the Goldman Sachs uh, and, and uh, the, Co uh, Co uh, the uh, Coke brothers uh, and various other <gasps> entities that are usually like, you know, red flags in this sort mm -hmm. of milieu. They wanted you to vote in that way. Right. I, it, yeah. I know, it's horrific. Again, I'm <laughs> yeah. not pro-EU, no. I'm not pro-Clinton, no. I'm not pro any of them. No. Right, okay. I just happen to find this out. Mm -hmm. And it's astonishing, it's absolutely astonishing. Like, oh, do you remember, can you remember the, the stories about um, that 13-year-old getting raped in Sweden and uh, the judge let them off? Or um, how um, Hillary Clinton had the Kourou disease, or that she'd had a stroke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Those yeah. stories were planted by Cambridge Analytica. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Absolutely. You know the phrase "drain the swamp." Yeah. yeah. yeah Marketing yeah. campaign by Cambridge Analytica. They were applying AI algorithms as early as 2014 to see what would be effective. Uh, way to bolster a particular candidate, mm -hmm. and the phrases they came up with were, were "drain the swamp." the deep state and make America great again. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Which were all and there was another one which I can't remember, which is was, was another one that was used in, in Trump's campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically what initially Robert Mercer and Cambridge Analytica were backing Ted Cruz. Um, and what happened was WikiLeaks exposed that the DNC had seen that Donald Trump was 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 had a candidacy. Mm -hmm. And they felt that he was he was like a lame duck. They felt that they could um, beat him very easily. Right. And so what was proven by uh, in, in the WikiLeaks stuff was that the DNC actually paid off huge numbers of, of newspapers to run pro-Donald Trump adverts, mm -hmm. thinking that they would divide the Republican vote and, and therefore present an easy candidate for Hillary Clinton to win. Um, Robert Mercer noticed this said thanks for all the free advertising and moved his backing away from Ted Cruz onto, um, um, onto uh, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much Donald Trump put into his, his self-finance campaign? 
$10,000, which was a loan that he took back at interest against his own company. Donald Trump wanted to lose so that he could make his own television station and rant against it. And I think this is borne out by the fact that Infowars backed Donald Trump because yeah. they wanted yeah. Oh, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to basically afterwards say, see how corrupt the system is, yeah. see how Hillary cheated you and you and you and you. Yeah. And they didn't realise that essentially these elements of the American government that wanted Trump in. Yeah. via this Cambridge Analytica for whatever reason I don't know why but they wanted him in mm -hmm. possibly because I think essentially there's a bit of a right and coup there's these people like Robert Mercer Rebecca mm -hmm. Mercer and William Redstreet II and William Redstreet II is the person that basically uh, finances the Charles Martel Society and the MPI, which are huge right wing think tanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard Spence, you know, the guy that got punched, he oh, uh, yeah. he was popularised yeah. and, and, and coined or claimed to have coined the phrase alt right. Mm -hmm. He's um, financed by the MPI. <laughs> um, Breitbart, mm -hmm. papers, one of the, again, one of the, um, the right wing alt right, the platform of the alt right, ran mm -hmm. by Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon, who was aide to Donald Trump. Owned by Robert Mercer. Right. In fact, Breitbart set up its London uh, uh, branch specifically mm -hmm. to help UKIP. Why? Because Nigel Farage is financed by Robert Mercer. <laughs> it's all connection. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So essentially, yeah. there's yeah. these these very wealthy right wing people, mm -hmm. far right. As well, mm -hmm. William Redstreet and Robert Mercer dream of an all-white ethno state in America. They're, this is on record. They've stated this. Mm -hmm. um, they're manipulating people um, with sort of soft right-wing stuff, mm -hmm. um, leading into sort of more sort of dangerous stuff. These concepts, which, you know, as I say, these concepts of migrants oh, yeah, uh, yeah, and, yeah. and stuff like that, um, with with misleading stories and stuff like that. Somebody I basically, when I did this on on Rich Planet, somebody said, oh, I like what he was saying, but I don't agree with him about Breitbart. Breitbart tells stories that the left wing doesn't chat, and he, he linked this story and said, basically, uh, migrants cause half the crime in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, thank you very much, mate, because that actually proves my point, because <laughs> what that story didn't tell you was that of those crime statistics, they're crimes within the refugee camps, refugees against refugees. Mm -hmm. Technically, the, the, the figures are correct, but it manipulated the story manipulated it to make it look like refugees were attacking German citizens, and they weren't. There was yeah. the inherent crime that comes when you're living in a shanty town. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So of course there's a, there are problems caused by sort of mass influxes of people and stuff like that. But it's this manipulation of the um, of the, the material. And what did we start talking about right at the beginning? What does that do? It makes the reader feel like a victim, mm -hmm. right? You yeah, always yeah. present this group that is that is diametrically opposed in two reasons. Basically, you've got to be, you've got to know just enough about them to be terrified of them, mm -hmm. but they can't be powerful enough to have a platform where they can defend themselves, right? Yeah. yeah. Because otherwise, it all falls down. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, this is this is the sort of the connection. So, mm -hmm. in my mind, you've got these these groups like Cambridge Analytica, um, SCL. They're financed and connected to British military, the elites within the British establishment and the American establishment. Mm -hmm. These particular uh, people that finance them have a very, very specific idea about how they want to see America, mm -hmm. and it is far right. Yeah. They are yeah. utilising alternative media like Breitbart, Drudge Report, Infowars, that all share stories mm -hmm. to try and promote propaganda and fear that essentially benefits them ultimately. Mm -hmm. And then you look at like the other connections to, to SCL, Cambridge Analytica. By the way, it's gone bankrupt, but, but it's luckily, luckily, all the people that worked for it have managed to get jobs at some other firm called Emma Data, which was exactly the same thing. But I mean, what they did in Brexit was basically they funneled all the information through a, a shell company in Canada called Aggregate IQ, which means that it can't be investigated because it's not in in, in England. <laughs> I know, but yeah. what uh, Cambridge Analytica just to give a sort of premise, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. proudly boast that they've they've manipulated and controlled the election results in over a hundred countries. And they've gone record as uh, yeah, they're, well. they're proud of it. They're, okay, they're yeah. proud of it. Yeah. This is but they're connected to mm -hmm. Blackwater via yeah. Eric Prince, who's on the board. They're connected to Palantir via uh, Eric Tile. They're connected to to Facebook. Mm -hmm. What Palantir's got and stuff is like facial recognition technology and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's Facebook recently introduced? Facebook. Facial recognition yeah, technology. Yeah. What's iPhones recently introduced? <laughs> facial recognition technology. 
There's a thing that's in America called trap wire, okay, and the best way to explain trap wire, this officially it's not there, but basically is it's connected to CCTV sort of systems. Mm -hmm. And the best way to explain what, what might happen here is what's happening in China. Have you seen recently where that guy, there's a concert, 60,000 people there, mm -hmm. and facial recognition technology managed to pick him up on a crime that he committed 10 years ago, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Basically, the now, if you jaywalk or commit a crime in a public place, mm -hmm. they'll send the fine through the post to you. They'll catch you on mm -hmm. CCTV doing it, facial recognition. No need to send the police, just send a summons around to your house. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's technology that exists, mm. and this is the point. This is how manipulative this data mm. is. It's tied into your social media, it's tied into things, and, it, and, it, and it's tied into these broader sort of spectrums of technology, mm. like trap wire and palantir. And behind it, you've got corporate entities um, and people like Mercer, Tile, Regionary, um, and they've got specific ideas about what, what wants to be done with this. Yes. And further to that, these, these are connections to, say, the British military establishment, the British, um, you know, the British elite, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it, that's what I've been looking at recently. I think it's it's a real... Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But this is, I mean, this is a thing, like, this is why the, the stuff that's going on in, in Cambridge Analytica in the, in the newspapers, Right at the bottom of this story, basically, was the transcript of this, this um, um, uh, Brittany Kaisers, who used to work for uh, Cambridge Analytica, she was giving a deposition. Right buried in the bottom is this, this thing that basically, yeah, it's considered a weapon. It's, mm. it's, it's weaponized tactics and cannot be used by an export control by, British, by, by the British um, uh, government. It's like, right, well, that means that they must have known about this, these programs that they're now sort of exposing in court. Mm. It's mm. not to expose it, it's to get people used to the concept that your data is going to be used to manipulate you all the time yeah. and, it's, and there's nothing you can do about it. Mm. And to an extent they're right because people aren't aware of it. The other thing that got me about Cambridge Analytica that, that initially sort of really sort of like piqued my interest is to look this is serious this is, is because the tactics they use are almost identical to J-Trick. Mm. JTRIG, um, Joint Threat Intelligence Group, mm. is, is a GCHQ operation to manipulate the internet, right. basically, <laughs> to, to, to create sock puppet accounts and create fake gurus and to plant fake stories, red herrings. Um, and they've, they've got numerous things. They can break into your, your computer and, and uh, basically make your computer download child porn and send it to everyone on your email list. Wow. Yeah, and this, 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 it's so they can create paedophile things. Yeah, they can. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. here's an interesting thing, right? Okay, they've mm -hmm. got programs that promote certain stories mm -hmm. and programs that shut down certain stories. Which means that if you've seen a story that's got incredible traction, right? Okay, mm -hmm. And it's going like wildfire throughout alternative media, mm -hmm. it's probably a, a, a red herring that's been planted mm -hmm. by JTRIG. Right. Like you've got to look at the sources of these things and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like theories and stuff that have been floating around for a, a while that um, they're disinformation. They're, they're disinformation that they're, they're specifically designed to manipulate, move investigation in one specific mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. disregarding all of the yeah. evidence. Mm -hmm. And you get a lot of things as well where basically people are like, this has happened. Or how do you know that's happened? And they, they, you know, they start at the end and track back yes, rather yeah, than yeah. figure out what's actually happened. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, and again, this is the problem with, with a lot of these these theories is that they 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 disregard any other possibility. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, a lot of these theories as well look ludicrous from an outside perspective mm -hmm. or offensive. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, and what that's doing is 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 demonising you. And it's quite clever, really, because you get into this sort of like thing where people go, "Ha! Huh, well, are you telling me that I can't investigate this?" No, <laughs> no, not at all. But you've got to understand how people mm. are going to react to that. Yeah. So it's about how you do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, like, that's quite clever in itself because people find themselves in a position where they're defending themselves yeah. for the yeah. right to investigate in a certain yeah. way, mm -hmm. and then you're very reluctant to say, "Ah, oh, shit, I was wrong, wasn't I? That's not mm. actually what yeah. happened." Yeah. You, you know, people get into sort of factions and, mm -hmm. and and stuff like that to the point where manipulation of ego. Particularly on social media is is amazing. Plus, as we said, like you know, um, you're isolated, mm. you're overstimulated. Yeah. You're on your own, and you've got an audience. Yeah, 
It's, yeah. it's ludicrous. Yeah. And I've said this many, many times, but like, it's addictive like gambling social media because social information is vital, right? Mm, okay. yeah. if, if, I'm, if we're out in the wilderness or whatever and I've noticed you've made a fire, if I could figure out by copying you how to make that fire, yeah, yeah. I might not die tonight. Yeah, okay. yeah. If I could figure out how so-and-so made a million quid, I might be able to make mm. a million quid and mm. live like him or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so in that sense, social information is, is vital, which is why people like gossip columns mm. and we like salacious rumours and, 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 uh, uh, and stuff like that. Sneeze and uh, everybody loves that. And um, so when you sort of put into like a, a post down on, on social media, gambling with information mm. right yeah. you get a dopamine hit and you get an actual mm -hmm. physical physiological response from being praised mm. okay so what but also correspondingly you get a negative response from getting shouted at yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay so what might that tend to so particularly if you sat on your own and your only interaction with the world mm -hmm. and your only sort of like you know way of feeling good is via the medium of social mm -hmm. media you conceivably might start to alter your output mm -hmm. do you know what i mean yeah and mm -hmm. particularly which is exactly how these sock puppet accounts work mm -hmm. you know if you've got tiny people and you say and you say oh actually i'm not sure that this donald trump is uh, everything that he says he, he seems to know a lot of people from goldman sachs Oh, sure, sure, sure. It's all right. Mm -hmm. it, like a it stick with us. Q will tell you what uh, <laughs> what will do. Yeah, what will yeah, happen? Yeah. And all this yeah. bollocks. Like, um, it's very difficult to, particularly if you just just come into a group mm -hmm. to say. Has anyone pointed out that this is nonsense? Uh, because you'd just be shunned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And 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 compound that on top of the isolation, on top of the dopamine response, etc, etc, etc. And it's very, very easy to, to sort of get people on side. Mm -hmm. People also tend, we've got this function of blocking or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the other, the other thing that tends to happen is you get this sort of echo chamber of, um, of people in, in groups, like-minded groups. Mm -hmm. Facebook has got algorithms, it tends to, because they want you to stay on their platform, yeah. will tend to point you in the direction of things that you like rather than things mm. that you don't like. Mm -hmm. But again, the problem is, are we not just funneling people down and funneling people down? Mm -hmm. If you know, like if you can categorise somebody and say, mm. oh, you're a leftist, you like this, yeah. this, this and this. Oh, you're a conservative, you like this, this, this and this. Mm -hmm. It's easy to push your buttons because yeah. I know why you're going to respond. Mm -hmm. So this is, again, this is the whole point. This is the separation that you're getting on social media and via political parties and stuff like that. Finance, uh, I think, is the same by certain nefarious people. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I'm not an idiot. I am, I'm aware that basically that there are that there are people on the left that do this. A lot of people say to me, why are you having to go at the right all the time, mm -hmm. Neil? It's like, because the right are in power. We've got a right-wing <laughs> president. We've yeah. got a right-wing um, uh, government in England. Mm -hmm. Bang a lefty in it, I'll happily have a go at them. Like, okay, read this. There's so much about Clinton in that, it's ridiculous. I have no time for Obama, I have no time for any of them. I'm not pro EU, I'm not like, I'm not pro anything if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, that's why I'm having a go at this because it's real at the minute. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're it, it, similar things on, on, on the left. Of course, there are, mm -hmm. absolutely, yeah. there, there are. I think that sometimes at the moment, Certain things like, um, here's, an, here's one, right? okay. Somebody put up this thing, George Soros, he's a mm. CIA agent. I understand, like, this is the point, okay. He, he helps in the overthrow of Macedonia, right? I, I may be wrong about this, but because of his sort of like um, initial sort of uh, hedge bets on the EU, mm. I think that's why England managed to retain the pound rather than going to the, the euro. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's not as black and white as that because there's a lot of people that are yeah. anti-EU that are very proud mm. of that. Mm. That's George Soros is doing, as far yeah. as I can see. Yeah, yeah. He's an evil git and, yeah. and he's used by the CIA to manipulate certain things, okay? But at the minute, he's being used as agioprop, which is basically a boogeyman in order to justify um, your idea. Because you're fighting yeah. Nobody joins a group because basically they, they think, oh, we'll be the baddest person, like maybe gangsters and stuff like that. <laughs> but basically, you join a group because 
it's vital to protect yourself against this other group. Yeah. Nobody joins a group thinking that they're a nasty person, mm -hmm. right? They're doing it because someone is even worse, mm -hmm. right? And that is the manipulation that, that, that said. Somebody kept putting this, this um, poster up uh, and it showed a load of Syrian refugees getting off buses in Germany. Um, I think it was Germany. I may be wrong about that. But basically, and somebody was saying, well, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. Look at all these uh, refugees being bussed in. This proves it. This proves the white genocide. This proves that, the, that basically the, there's a plot by, and everyone will say, well, it'd be George Soros. George Soros has obviously financed this. He wants to integrate multiculturalism into France, into Germany, and then into the UK to break up the, uh, 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 to break up nationalised states and stuff like that. So I did a bit of digging, it took me about 30 seconds to find out that actually these buses were all financed by the government of Hungary. Okay. You know the government of Hungary that basically keeps blaming George Soros for the migrant influx? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it was them! They <laughs> said, no, we're not taking nobody, mm -hmm. no, we're not taking absolutely anybody, and they financed buses to bus them to, to the rest of Europe. Yeah. yeah. But then blame it on, on somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, I'm not stupid, I'm aware that mm -hmm. basically like all these people have got nefarious has none of them are to be trusted at all. Mm -hmm. But you need to just like, don't assume stuff. Mm -hmm. You need to like look at the actual source of it. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, that did amuse me that one. It's just mm -hmm. like, fuck, come on, bye.